Now I'm going to go over the various components for your axle shaft installation into your Dana 41 axle housing. And all these parts may look overwhelming, but it's actually very simple as the passenger side and the driver's side are the exact same setup. So once you do one side, it is a mirror on the other side. Going over all the components for the passenger side installation, I have everything labeled out so it will be easy to understand. This shim kit will separate the passenger side from the driver's side and going through it all. Working downwards from our shims, we'll go over all these different parts. And starting on your left, this is your axle oil seal inner, which will actually be installed in the inner of your axle housing. You can see there's multiple different lips on the axle housing and we'll push the seal right against the farthest lip, as you can see where my finger's pointing. Next, the axle cup will be installed, or this can be called your race, and this will be installed onto your axle shaft on this bearing, which will ride on the cup, and this bearing has been already pressed on to your axle shaft. Note this bearing has to be pressed on with a hydraulic press because it cannot be just pushed on. When installing your axle shaft bearing, make sure you use some multi-purpose high temperature bearing grease. We'll make sure we pack this bearing so it will ride smoothly. And once you've got your axle oil seal inner installed, you will just push our axle shaft into the axle housing. We'll just push it in with the bearing and then we'll have to put our cup on top of our bearing and then we will use a hammer and tap your cup into your housing and then it'll seat on the next ridge on your axle housing. Once you get your axle shaft assembly installed, then you have to move the fun part, which is the shimming, so we get the right end play on our axle. You want to make sure we get this set right, because if you have it too tight, you will burn out your bearings, and too loose, there'll be too much slop. So it's critical we get our shim kit installed correctly. So the shim kit will be installed directly on top of our axle housing placed on here, and on top of that, we will have our bearing retainer and then we will bolt our shims so that's kind of a guessing game and then we will use these holes on our shims go through these holes and then through the holes on the bearing retainer and then we'll use these 3 8 inch fine thread one and a quarter inch long with lock washer and nut and these are grade eight and there's six of them and then we will torque these nuts when you get the appropriate amount of shims installed between your bearing retainer, we want to make sure we use a dial gauge and we'll get six thousandths of an inch of end play on our axle shafts. And once we've determined that, we can then install our brake backing plate on top of our bearing retainer. And then we'll put gasket maker, we'll use Permatex, the right stuff, put a bead around the bearing retainer, and this will be installed between our brake backing plate on the back side. Once you have your brake backing plate installed, now we have to install the axle oil seal with gasket and our grease retainer on the front side of our brake backing plate. As so, and then we will feed all of our six bolts through the whole assembly, and then we will torque these bolts to 30 foot pounds. Now it's time to rebuild our axle shafts in our Dana 41 axle. And the first step is to use some acetone to clean out the inside of your axle housing. So ensure there's nothing in there and then it'll be an easy fit for our seal to get in. Now we're going to lift up our axle and stand it up straight and down so we can put in our oil seal directly into the axle housing and we'll just pound it in until it hits that inner lip where my finger's pointing. This is your inner axle oil seal. I'm gonna make sure we install it the right direction. So you wanna have it so the more metal part is facing upwards and the lip is facing inwards and then it will be installed as so. And we'll have to drive it down using a hammer and a large socket. Standing your axle on and make sure that your drives are nice and square. So I'm just using a inch and seven sixteenths inch socket with an extension on it and just hit it with a hammer and that will drive your oil seal down. Drive your oil seal all the way down using your socket and it is all the way set into the axle housing 
all the way onto that back lip I showed you before. So once you've got your oil seals uh, in the axle, you want to have a take, take a look at the shaft itself and just kind of maybe sand off uh, some of the rough edges and uh, that will allow the axle to spin uh, on the oil seals on both sides. Once you're finished sanding, use some acetone to make sure you clean out the bearing and then get anything off the axle shaft. The bearings have already been pressed onto our axle shafts and we'll just use some high temperature bearing grease and we'll pack these bearings full of grease. The wheel bearing grease has been packed all the way into the bearing and as you can see it's coming out of the bottom now and we'll just clean that up. That's a good pack for your bearing. It's the only really way to do it when you have your bearing ready pre-installed and pushed on. The next step is to apply wheel bearing grease to the inside of your axle housing. And we'll put a little bit on the oil seal at the back as well, just so it rides in the axle. A thin coat of grease has been applied to the inside of the axle housing, and now we can install the axle shaft directly into the axle housing. This is the shorter one. We'll make sure we have grease applied to both sides where the seal will be riding, and we'll just push it all the way in until it seats all the way in and it's engaged with the differential. Once the axle shaft is fully installed, now we have to install the axle cup. And this cup has two different sides. If one side that's wider and one side that's not as wide, you want the wider side to go towards the bearing and that will just slide right on. And we'll just push right onto the bearing. Now it has to be tapped on. So don't overthink this, just get a hammer and tap it on. The axle bearing cup is now fully seated into the axle housing and the passenger side axle shaft is installed. Next step is shimming and we'll do the same steps on the driver's side. Moving over to the driver's side, this side is already complete and it's the exact same steps as we just did on the passenger side. Now we can continue shimming and you have to shim both sides at the same time to get the right end play as these axle shafts are now interconnected with each other. Now I'm going to go over how to install the right amount of shims on your axle housing. This will allow your axle shaft to move in and out as you want it to move in and out 1,000 to 6 thousandths of an inch. This will make sure your bearings don't burn out and there's enough free play so the bearings ride smoothly. And to do so, we will just have to guess the amount of shims we're going to need and then we'll just apply them onto the axle housing. What we are going to do is have the thicker shim at the back and there are four thin ones. And you wanna make sure the holes line up with your axle housing. And there's actually three holes at the bottom. The center hole is your actual little drain hole, just in case grease starts to leak out of the seal. Make sure everything lined up and we'll put four bolts through while installing our bearing retainer on top. With all five shims lined up with the holes, put your bearing retainer on top. You can see the bearing retainer has a smart diameter than your shims and now that will put pressure onto the cup as you can see we're working on both sides at the same time so it has to be shimmed and torque to test the end play align all the holes on your shims and bearing retainer with the holes on the axle housing making sure your center hole your three holes at the bottom are in a line for your little drain hole and now we'll put our bolts right through all the holes Fast forward and five of the bolts are now installed. The grade eight bolts will be facing with the nut towards you. And then we'll just install all six and then we'll have to torque these up with the nut to get our 30 foot pounds so we can test the end play of the valve gauge. Now thread all six nuts on the six bolts. All six bolts are now torqued to 30 foot pounds on both sides. And you can see the shimming is not correct. The axle shaft doesn't even spin, so we have to add more shims behind our bearing retainer to give more space so there is actually some end play. After our first attempt not working, we have to go back to our shim kit and get more shims to bring out the spacing from our retainer. It'll put less pressure on the bearing and allow for more end play on the axle shaft, so now it'll spin. Now fast forward and there has been more shims applied to your axle housing behind the retainer and that has brought out the spacing and now the axle shaft does spin. Ensure you add the same amount of shims on both the passenger and driver side 
And finally, you have to torque all six bolts to 30 foot-pounds before we mount a dial indicator to the end of the axle shaft to test the end plate in and out and make sure it's in spec range between one thousandths and six thousandths inch. Make sure when you get one side set, you shim them to the same amount of shims on both sides and then test with the dial indicator on both. One critical step before we mount the dial indicator to the end of the axle shaft is we have to make sure we use a rubber hammer to give your axle shaft three good blows and that will send your axle shaft all the way to the other side against your bearing retainer. And now we'll do that the other side, so give me a second. After hitting the axle shaft with a rubber hammer on both sides, we now know our bearing and the inside is now pushing against our bearing retainer. And now we can mount the dial indicator on the end of the axle shaft. And how we have our rear axle set up with the dial indicator is this so we have the rear axle sitting on two cinder blocks, so it's nice and sturdy. Then we have a spare bumper on the floor. Then our dial gauge will stick to it with the magnetic base. And then we'll have it perfectly in line with our axle shaft. With the dial indicator set to zero and it's right on your axle shaft, we can now determine our end plate. And we'll give it a pull in and out. And we can see it is moving four thousandths of an inch. And you want it between one thousandths and six thousandths of end plate as per manual specs so we know that this is shimmed properly. Moving from the passenger side to the driver's side it's the same setup with your dial indicator set to zero. We'll test the end plate on our drive shaft. Give it a pull. You can see we're about three four thousandths of end plate. Know that this is set right as it's in between one thousandths and six thousandths end of free play. And now we can continue putting on our brake backing plate. The passenger and driver side are now properly shimmed and there's the right amount of end plate on your axle shaft. The next step is to take these six bolts apart so we can install our brake backing plate on those bolts. And then on the back side, we'll install the right stuff gasket maker on this side to prevent any oil from seeping out. And then we'll have to flip this over when we install it. And then on this side, there will be a gasket installed. The gasket will be installed so the drain hole is at the bottom. Then you have your oil seal on top. Make sure your holes are all lined up with your drain hole at the bottom. And on top of that will be your next gasket with the drain hole aligned. And then on top of that, you will put your grease retainer on top, lining all the holes with this catch part on the grease retainer towards the bottom. And then we'll have our bolts all the way through with the lock washer and we'll torque these to 30 foot pounds. Now I'm loosening all six nuts. Make sure to apply a permatex the right stuff. We have 90 minutes on to the bearing retainer. We'll give it a nice coating all the way around. Just on one side, the side that goes against the brake backing plate. With an even coat of the right stuff gasket maker applied to the bearing retainer, just install it onto the bolts, just sliding it on. We are also going to apply a small bead of the right stuff Permatex to the back of the brake backing plate. And don't want to go too far and get gasket maker all over the back of your plate. With gasket maker on both surfaces, now we will push the brake backing plate onto the bearing retainer, going through all those bolts right to the holes. One note, make sure you have your brake backing plate installed in the right direction. So you want to have it so your wheel cylinder is at the top for your brakes. Now install your first gasket, making sure you have the holes lined up and the drain hole at the very bottom. Make sure to apply some grease to the axle shaft. With the first gasket pushed all the way onto the bolts, now we have to install the oil seal. Make sure you add some grease to the inside where the rubber is. Now install the oil seal onto those bolts, going right through the brake backing plate, just pushing it on. The oil seal is installed this way with this larger lip facing outwards. Finally, install the last gasket on top of the oil seal. I'm just line it up with the bolts and the holes making sure we have the drain hole at the bottom. Lastly, install the grease retainer on top of those 
gasket oil seal and the other gasket. Line up the holes and make sure you have the drain hole at the bottom once again. The last step is to install the lock washer and fine thread nut on the bolt. Make sure to torque all six bolts to 30 foot pounds. Use a torque wrench and a wrench to hold in the back. And we'll do it in a star pattern so it puts even pressure on to the gasket maker on the back. The driver's side is the exact same steps that I just showed you on the passenger side in regards to installing your brake backing plate, the gaskets, the oil seal, and your grease retainer. And these bolts are torqued to 30 foot pounds as well. Mm -hmm.